All right, this is going to be a quick review of the StarTech UniDupe dock. It sells for about $200. Uh, I found it uh, for $166 online. All right, so when you open up the box, which we'll do here, this is actually wrapped in plastic. I've removed it. This is the UniDupe dock in all of its glory. Uh, on the side, you can see it's got the power connector, it's got the on off switch, and it's got a USB 2.0 connector. And then it's got these little rubber covers that come off here. That's for uh, the SATA, and this one's for IDE. And then the same on the opposite side for IDE and for SATA. So you can see this. Just plug in like that. And that allows you to copy from IDE to SATA, IDE to IDE, SATA to SATA, SATA to IDE, etc., etc. And um, I'll show you what else that comes in the box. We'll just set that aside and move this over. So in the box, you've got your uh, standard power cable. You've got one for uh, Europe power cable. You've got the power brick here that's going to plug into the unit. You've got uh, two small IDE cables, short ISD, <laughs> short IDE cables that are in the box. There are two adapters for converting a laptop IDE drive to standard IDE. That way you can clone an IDE drive if you uh, clone an IDE laptop drive if you want to. Uh, laptop SATA hard drives use the same connectors as the desktop drive, so you don't need any adapters. This is just for laptop IDE drives, and you've got two of them. There is an additional power cable in here for uh, another country. Uh, I think that's Asia. There's a USB cable, just a standard A to B USB 2.0 cable. And then there are two short power cables. Again, this is for hooking up uh, IDE drives. And the very bottom of the box here, there is a pathetic manual. And this manual is not complete. Although all the page numbers are there, it doesn't explain to you that there is a hidden menu on this unit. Anywhere in this instruction booklet is there any mention of a hidden menu. So let's plug it in and turn it on, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. OK, so I've got the unit plugged in. Uh, I'll just hit the on-off switch here. It doesn't have any drives connected to it, obviously. And it comes up and shows you its uh, firmware version, which I don't understand why, because there appears to be no firmware updates. So I'm not exactly sure why it emphasizes which firmware version you have. So it sort of goes through this initialization and tells you it's found zero devices. And, and um, you get your options there, which you can use your up and down arrows here to select through your menu options. And if you notice, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, and it starts over. If you hold down this escape button, and this is what the instructions fail to mention, if you hold that down for about three seconds, you'll see there's a, a whole other menu option here. And you'll see that this says right here that, and it's important you don't get these confused because you will lose everything if you do it backwards. The top says source 2. The reason it says source 2 is that's IDE. Source 1 is the SATA connector. And then des destination 2 is the IDE. And destination 1 is the SATA. So what we want is we're going to say that this is our original drive that a customer has. And we want to clone it or duplicate it onto a more modern SATA hard drive that's going to replace this in the customer's system. So what we would do is this is going to plug in on the source side. This is the source drive that we want to copy. So here where it says source on IDE, we're going to put the drive down here on the table. And we're just going to plug it into the available IDE connector here and hook it up to the power, like so. So that's our source drive. For destination drive, I have a Seagate 750 gig drive SATA connector. And that's just going to, on this device here, this is going to be our destination, so on the destination side. And this is just going to slide into place, just like so. With these two drives now hooked up, we'll turn the unit on. And it should detect both drives. And it says it found two devices. And then we have several options here. Copy the hard drive. Compare the hard drives after they've been copied. Pre-scan the source drive for any problems. 
rescan the bus if you've changed drives without turning the unit off. Source size if you want to, basically the source, in this case the source is a 250 gig drive and the destination is a 750. If I'm copying a 250 gig drive, it's got to go to another 250 gig drive or larger. So in this case, we're going to a 750. Um, there's a setup option. I won't go through any of that. You can download the directions, instructions from the website, from StarTech, which are much more, much more thorough than the directions this unit comes with, which I personally find unacceptable. They should be exactly the same. And the online PDF file explains the hidden menu that the manual that it comes with does not. So to copy the hard drive, we simply push the enter button here. And you'll see it's going to give us uh, an amount of time that's elapsed. And this takes a while. Now, if we were to use a program to do this, like Acronis or Clonezilla, Drive Image XML, Ghost, it could be faster or not. It depends on how much data is on the drive. If the drive has 10 gigs of data on it, obviously it'll be faster to clone it using software if you have the technical ability to do that. What's nice about this is you don't even have it hooked up to a computer. It says it's copying at 51 megabytes a second, and when it's done, the target drive will appear to be 250 gigs, and you'll have to run some partitioning software, like Partition Magic, or if you have Windows Vista or Windows 7, you, you can actually use the partitioning software that's already built into that to resize the unallocated space to show all 750 gigs without affecting all the data on the drive. The bottom line is, as a unit itself, I'm disappointed that um, it only supports USB 2.0. I think for this price, it should definitely support USB 3.0. So let's say you don't want to use this as a duplicator. You can use it as a dock. You can plug the drive in, or both drives in if you want, SATA or IDE or any combination thereof, plug it into your computer, and have access to those drives just as a USB adapter. But the USB 2.0 is very, very slow. So if you're moving a lot of data, it's going to take a while. Now in this case, moving 250 gigs of data, as I was mentioning earlier, can be faster with this device if the drive is full and it'll be faster with software if the drive is mostly empty. If it's only got 10%, uh, 20% of data on the drive and 80% of the drive is empty, this device is going to take the same amount of time no matter what. It copies every sector, whether that sector's got data on it or it doesn't. Whereas programs like Acronis, Ghost, Drive Image XML, Clonezilla, that will only copy data. So that could happen a lot faster. But again, there's technical knowledge required there, having the drives plugged into the computer, running the software. Software runs differently depending on which version you've got. With this device here, you just plug it in and use it. It has a quick erase function, which is part of the hidden menu. Uh, it can, I don't know why, but it supports RAID arrays uh, that it creates. <laughs> Not ones from other systems, but a RAID array that it creates. If for some reason you wanted to create a RAID array through USB 2.0, it's not going to go any faster. I don't know why you'd want to do it. It seems like a pointless feature to me. And it seems very, very slow. Like this says it's an hour and 15 minutes to copy 250 gigs. That's just really slow, for I think. I mean, the benefit is you can set it and walk away and go do something else. Um, I think for the money, it's not good enough. Uh, it does tend to be somewhat finicky with some drives and on the detection process. I've had drives where I've turned it on, it doesn't detect it. I've turned it off, turned it back on, and then it does detect it. Doesn't seem to be a rhyme or reason to it. It's got the option to skip bad sectors, but when I select that option, the time goes out the window. I, I don't know what it's doing, but it seems like it hits a bad sector and it gets stuck and I got impatient and didn't wait for it to complete. There are other tools that are better uh, suited to copying drives with bad sectors uh, than this. You can certainly try it if you want to. And that's how the unit works. I think for the money, you're better off with the cavalry, un um, the cavalry duplicator. It's a dual SATA duplicator, unless you need the IDE functionality that this offers. Uh, I think the cavalry unit, which is USB 3.0 and only sells for $75, is a much better value. Uh, it doesn't have the screen, it's just got one button to duplicate. Uh, it's standalone just like this is, SATA to SATA only, which of course also works with laptop SATA drives. And uh, that's my review of the StarTech UniDupe dock. Overall, on uh, a scale of one to five, I give it a two. I'm not impressed. I think it should sell for uh, at least half the price, and it should have USB 3.0, and there should be firmware updates, and the directions that come with the unit should be the same directions you can download online. There should be no hidden menus. Anybody who's technical enough to use this doesn't need the menu options, any menu options hidden. So something to think about. There are other alternatives out there that are better priced and are faster, quite frankly, than this unit is. So there you have it.